So in this video, I'll be comparing the first contract quest with the Dark Brotherhood in Oblivion and Skyrim. So starting off with Oblivion, we get our very first quest from Vincente. He explains how contracts works and tells us we must go to the Imperial City waterfront to kill a pirate aboard a ship. Excellent. Here is what you must do. Go to the waterfront district of the Imperial City. There you will find a ship named the Marie Elena. Board the ship and find its captain, Gaston Toussaud. He'll be in his cabin. Eliminate Toussaud in any manner you see fit. He will also tell you that you could smuggle yourself on board in a crate. The pirates have been moving a lot of cargo on board lately. You may be able to smuggle yourself on board in one of the packing crates. We have the option of talking to the other members of the guild to get their insights into the contract. This is helpful because they will often tell you more stealthy ways you could possibly kill your target or better ways into areas that you might not have known about otherwise. Antoinette shares her story about traveling aboard a prison ship and reminds you that there are plenty of places to hide on a dark ship. I've traveled by prison ship. It was cramped and dark. There was little room to move around, but plenty of shadowy nooks to hide in. Remember that. Tinava will tell you that there is an entrance to the captain's quarters at the stern of the ship, and it could be a better way inside. The Marie Elena, you say? I've seen that ship. There's a unique balcony at the stern. My guess is it leads to the captain's cabin. Could be useful. Gogrin doesn't really have anything useful to say here, but I find his story funny all the same. Oh, for example, this one time, I had a contract to kill a little Nord girl at her birthday party. <laughs> she asked me if I was the jester. So I said to her, No, I am a messenger of death. <laughs> you should have seen the look on her face. <laughs> anyway, she won't be seeing age six. Upon arriving to the Imperial City waterfront and approaching the pirate ship, you will be stopped by the first mate. She will tell you that the crew will try to kill you if you get too close. Beautiful, isn't she? The Marie Elena. Damn fine ship. With a damn fine crew. I should know. I'm her first mate. Malvulus is my name. So believe me when I tell you we don't like it when people snoop around in our affairs. You get near that ship and my men will run you through. You have a few options here. You can just run onto the ship and kill all the pirates and be on your way. <laughs> or you can hide yourself in one of the cargo crates next to the ship. If you choose to hide in one of the crates, you will be transported below the deck of the ship where you can sneak around a few pirates and go right into the captain's quarters. After killing the captain, you hear a knock on the door. The other pirates are coming in. You can fight them or flee out the door to the back. Captain! Captain Tussauda, are you alright, sir? We, we heard a clamor, Captain. We're coming in. Either way, head back to the sanctuary to claim your reward. The quest is simple but detailed. In my opinion, possibly more detailed and entertaining than most of the quests in the Skyrim questline. Moving on to Skyrim, things are a bit different. We do not technically get a first real quest when we join the Dark Brotherhood. Instead, we are given three side quests, if you can even qualify them as that. What even is a side quest for a side quest? These side quests are very much a Skyrim thing. These type of quests are quite possibly responsible for ruining the whole of the game. They are meant to fill in the world with more quests than there actually are. They are busy work. They are lazy. That being said, upon returning to the sanctuary, you will find that Cicero has arrived with the Night Mother. The other members, except for Festus, are rather dismissive of him and the Night Mother. They don't follow the Night Mother anymore. They follow Astrid. Surely punishment? Keep talking, little man, and we'll see who gets punished. Oh, be quiet, you great lumbering lapdog. The man has had a long journey. You can at least be civil. Mr. Cicero, I for one am delighted you and the Night Mother have arrived. Your presence here signals a welcome return to tradition. Oh, what a kind and wise wizard you are! Sure to earn our lady's favor. You and the Night Mother are of course welcome here, Cicero. And you will be afforded the respect deserving of your position as keeper. Understood? 
husband? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes! Thank you, thank you, thank you! But make no mistake. I am the leader of this sanctuary. My word is law. Are we clear on that point? Oh, yes, mistress! Perfectly! You're the boss! After the group finishes talking to Cicero, Astrid will tell you that she has a contract for you. This is the first real contract for the Skyrim Dark Brotherhood. You must travel to the city of Markarth and find Muri. She wants an ex-lover killed. You must go to the city of Markarth and speak with the apothecary's assistant. You'll probably find her in the Hag's Cure when the shop is open. The girl's been running her mouth. Wants an ex-lover killed. Before going there, you can talk to Nazir to turn in your other contracts. They till lies dead, I hope. Of course she is. I hear the mining business is extremely cutthroat. And those hours, the murder. And just like Oblivion, you can ask the other members about your current contract. But unlike Oblivion, none of the other members really tell you anything significant. Festus even reinforces the idea that an assassin doesn't need to be stealthy. Yeah. Just because you're now a professional assassin, don't think you have to skulk around in the dark like a skeever and stab people. Completely destroying the point of the Dark Brotherhood in Skyrim. Skyrim focuses heavily on the idea that you can be anyone and do anything. This, of course, is core to what the Elder Scrolls is supposed to be. But the problem here is how Skyrim tries to achieve this. There is a very important difference between being able to do anything and being able to do everything. It's one of the core flaws of Skyrim. You can go through the entire game and do everything in one playthrough, with absolutely little to no hassle, whereas previous games would punish you if you didn't stick to what you were best at. But that's the problem in Skyrim. You can't be the best at anything. You can just be mediocre at everything. It's almost as bad as The Elder Scrolls Online, where there are thousands of heroes, when that very idea is very counterintuitive to what these types of games are supposed to be. Bethesda loves power fantasy. But how can you be this world-altering hero in the context of an MMO when there are thousands of other world-altering heroes doing the exact same quest as you right in front of you? It breaks any possible immersion and is quite possibly the worst mistake Zenimax ever made aside from Fallout 76. Terrible online adaptions aside, when you do arrive in Markarth and talk to Miri, she will tell you why she wants the target Elaine dead and where to find him. What I need, what I need is for Elaine Dufont to die. I want him hunted down and murdered like the dog he is. They're holed up in some old dwarven ruin, Raldbathar. It's near Windhelm. They use it as their base. It's where they stage their raids. She will also ask you to kill Nilsine Shattershield and give you a backstory on why. It's Nilsine Shattershield in Windhelm. If Nilsine dies too, I'll make it worth your while. This is an example of Bethesda injecting false choice into the game as it shows up as an optional quest target in your journal. It really means nothing. The backstory isn't necessarily bad, and it seems like a reasonable reason for someone in this world to contact the Dark Brotherhood. But the actual killings themselves have issues. More on that in a moment. I have to first give praise where praise is due. It's a nice touch having Muri give you a poison, if you ask for more info. I planned to kill Elaine myself, you know. Nilsine too, but lost my nerve. I even brewed a special poison, lotus extract. Maybe you could use it? It makes a lot of sense in the context of the world, especially seeing as she works at an apothecary, and she would have access to these materials. And as a side note, here's another thing you can see that they changed in Skyrim that I absolutely despise. The camera. In Oblivion, the time around you and the subject of your interaction freezes. Sure, this isn't realistic, but it ensures nothing stupid happens with the AI while you're in the conversation. Like in this all-too-common instance of a character standing right in your conversation, idling like a moron. It is more immersion-breaking than time-freezing by a long shot. Of course, this is just a minor inconvenience or an annoyance, but... This stupid system can even break dialogue altogether, because characters will sometimes stop mid-sentence if something happens that takes them farther from the player, or if they take enough damage. I understand they were going for a more alive feel, but this feels like a very poor design decision. Alright, back to the quest at hand. You can kill no scene if you choose, but there isn't really a creative way of doing that. Just go to Windhelm and stab her a few times or something. That's pretty much it.
It's the same thing with Elaine, except for he's inside of a Dwemer ruin, surrounded by a lot of bandits. It's really no different than anything else in Skyrim. After killing Elaine, or both of them, you can return to Miuri to get your reward. This is also a departure from Oblivion, seeing as the Dark Brotherhood members would usually be the one to reward you. That bastard got exactly what he deserved. And I heard about Nilsine. You have more than fulfilled your part of the bargain. Please, take this. As payment, and a symbol of my affection. After collecting your reward and returning to the Sanctuary, Astrid will immediately give you your next task, which is spying on Cicero, but we will cover that in the next video. Overall, the Skyrim Dark Brotherhood questline is designed to feel more busy, if that's the right word. The quests are short, boring, and lack substance, and because of that, Bethesda tries to fill in the gaps with the nonsense side quests that are basically just go here and kill this, while also most likely trying to keep the player unaware that that is what the entire guild has been reduced to. But this is just my opinion. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.